welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen and I am a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and I am on the WW Blue Plan. Today I have meal prep for you. I have three absolutely delicious recipes. They are point friendly, calorie friendly, and of course absolutely incredibly delicious. So make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss a meal prep video. Every single Monday I upload so you don't want to miss a single one. Hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so you're notified when new videos are uploaded. I'd love it if you take a moment and check out the description box. You're going to find the link to my brand new second channel where I talk all about nutrition and weight loss. So I'd love it if you'd head over and subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. I have a goal of a thousand subscribers by the end of the month and we're well on our way. So please take a moment and head over and subscribe. Also in the description box, you'll find my nutrition coaching website. I offer macro calculation, one-on-one -on -one coaching group, coaching. We all could use a little bit of coaching and a little person in our corner when it comes to weight loss and nutrition. So definitely check that out as well. You'll find links, discount codes to all of my favorite things. And lastly, the link to head over and join me over on my community on Facebook. We'd love to have you be part of that community as well. So we have three delicious recipes. Give this video a thumbs up if you're excited and let's jump into this week's meal prep. breakfast this week, I'm feeling potatoes, kind of that comfort food. So I'm going to be making skinny, cheesy potatoes. This original recipe comes from the skinniest dish. I did make quite a few modifications. Of course, all of the modifications and the original recipe will be on my website. But what I'm planning on doing is pairing these potatoes with eggs, bacon, sausage, maybe some fruit, just whatever I feel like each morning. But I'm excited for these. So let me show you what's in our potatoes. First, you're going to need some chicken broth, non-fat Greek yogurt, non-stick cooking spray, cottage cheese of your choice. I am using full fat cottage cheese. If you want to try to lower the points even more, you could go with a reduced fat or low fat cottage cheese. We also are gonna need some seasoning. So I have some minced onion, some garlic powder, and the original recipe actually calls for Lowry seasoning salt and I don't have that so I'm going to substitute some Dax green zest This is going to help eliminate excess salt in the recipe plus this is amazing So this is Dax. This is a no salt no MSG all natural clean seasoning as you guys know I love Dax I've been using them now for a couple of years and I own every single one of their seasonings This green zest is amazing. It is perfect on everything. It is a very very versatile Seasoning so if you want to start out with a few I would highly recommend this one amongst a few others Which I will make sure that I leave in the description box for you guys, but the green zest is awesome and these seasonings are like I said extremely clean so all that is in this seasoning is spices dehydrated onion dehydrated garlic and lemon peel that's it so clean 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 so I'm going to be adding some of that in place of adding in additional salt with seasoning salt I will do a little bit of salt and pepper you're also going to need eggs rice cauliflower so I have regular rice cauliflower and then I have the rice veggies I'll use this one if I don't have enough of the regular. You wanna make sure your cauliflower rice is defrosted just a little bit for this recipe. I'm going to use reduced fat mozzarella cheese. You could really use any reduced fat cheese. And of course, the star of cheesy potatoes, shredded hash browns. So let's get started. So we're going to go ahead and combine all of our ingredients except for a little bit of cheese to a large bowl. So make sure you're picking out a fairly large bowl. We are going to start with one full bag of shredded hash browns, which is 32 ounces or so of hash browns. I went ahead, when I figured points and calories, I figured it on the entire bag of shredded hash browns. Now I did let these thaw just a little bit as well, just because it'll be easier for them to combine and it'll produce a little less liquid when we go to cook it. We're also going to add one cup of chicken broth. 
and two eggs. So I went ahead and pre-cracked two eggs because you guys know me in shells. So I wanted to make sure that I avoided all the shells. You need three cups of riced cauliflower. So I ended up using the entire bag of regular riced cauliflower and then a little bit of the one with the carrots and the peas. And I don't mind a little bit of carrots, a little bit of extra veggies, never hurt anyone. So I do have a little bit of that in the riced cauliflower. One cup of non-fat Greek yogurt. One cup of cheese, and again, I'm using mozzarella. You could really use any cheese that you want. This is just what I had on hand. We also need one and a half cups of cottage cheese, and this was almost that entire container of good culture. I mean, really, really close to the entire container. So just as a point of reference about how much cottage cheese you're going to need for this recipe. And then I am preliminarily going to stir this. I want to make sure that these main ingredients get combined in this bowl is really full. So make sure that you guys are pulling out a rather large bowl. So I'm gonna do a little bit of stirring and then we'll add in all of our seasonings. So for the seasoning, of course, we are going to do just a little bit of salt and pepper because that's going to bring out the flavor, a little bit of our cheesy potatoes. And then we also want some minced onion. I'm going to do about two tablespoons of minced onion. Garlic powder, I want about a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half. And then last but not least, the green zest, which is replacing the seasoning salt. I don't have Lowry's or anything on hand, so I'd rather add something that doesn't, again, have any salt in it, but is going to give it a ton of flavor. Oh my gosh, this looks incredible. It smells really good. So I am going to get this stirred completely. Make sure it is mixed very well. I'm going to go ahead and get my oven preheated to 375 degrees. Pull out my baking dish and that's it, you guys. This is very, very simple. And then we're ready to pop this into the oven. So in a nine by 13 pan, I went ahead and added all of the potato mixture. I did spray it really well with nonstick cooking spray first because potatoes definitely have a tendency to stick. And then lastly, we are going to top it with the last three quarters of a cup of cheese. And again, I just chose mozzarella. You really, again, could use any cheese. I probably would have used a light shredded three cheese blend if I had it, but I just happen to have mozzarella on hand. So go ahead and top it with that. And then before we cover it with foil, it does need to be completely covered for cooking. There's a little pro tip to not have your cheese stick to your foil, and that is just give it a quick spray of nonstick cooking spray. So I'm just going to add that right to the top of the cheese. And again, and that will prevent it from sticking to the foil. So let's cover it up, get it into the oven at 375 degrees for about 40 minutes, and then we will remove the foil and let it bake another 20 to 25 to get the cheese nice and crispy. Doesn't this look so good? So these are the cheesy, skinny potatoes. These look amazing. Look at that. It is hearty and thick. I am so excited for these. So my plan is I'm going to just leave the potatoes here in the baking dish. Mine makes eight servings. So I'm gonna cut this into eight servings. And then each day since I'm working from home, I will decide whether I wanna have an egg, some bacon, some sausage, some fruit with my cheesy potatoes. And that's kind of how I'll determine breakfast throughout the week. So I'm not going to meal prep anything other than these potatoes. Oh, these look so good. So that is my plan. So if you are working outside the home, you could always pre-plan and prep your other source of protein. So your eggs or your bacon or sausage. But for me, I'm fortunate to be able to do it just the morning of. So this is breakfast. So into eight servings. So that's going to be quite a large serving. It is six smart points on both the blue and green plan and only three points on purple because you don't have to count for eggs or the hash browns. 253 calories per serving when you're making eight servings. So again, you can go ahead and make some modifications of a lower fat cottage cheese and even a different cheese if you want and just recalculate the points. But I will gladly spend six points for this because I'm on the blue plan. I can pair it with eggs for zero and that's a healthy, well-rounded breakfast. So this is breakfast for the week and I'm super excited. For 
lunch this week, I'm making a Thai chicken bowl. I've been craving Thai food, and this sounds amazing. It is low point. It's a lot of food, which I'm a volume eater, so I love that, and it's low calorie. So I'm excited. So let me show you what's in our Thai chicken bowls. You're going to need some white rice or rice of your choice. Of course, if you're on the purple plan, you're probably going to opt for brown rice because it's zero points. Oil, this is just the Chosen Foods avocado oil. Coconut aminos or soy sauce rice, wine, vinegar, maple syrup, sesame oil, peanut butter. I'm just using this crunchy peanut butter. It's just literally peanuts and salt. Ground ginger. You could also use fresh ginger. Chicken breast. And then veggies of your choice. So I decided to go with broccoli, zucchini, and carrots for my bowl. So really, you just could have anything you want. You just need about six cups of veggies. So let's get started on lunch. So the first thing we're going to do is get our rice cooking. So in my pan here, I have three quarters of a cup of dry rice and one and a half cups of water. We're just going to let this cook down until the rice is cooked thoroughly. So while our rice is cooking, we're going to prepare our chicken. So in my baking dish here, I have two breasts of chicken. I'm going to drizzle over about a half of a tablespoon of olive oil right over the top of the chicken. And then I'm also going to add coconut aminos. You could also use soy sauce. We want about a tablespoon of that. So we're going to pop that on top and then we are going to just turn the chicken here in the baking dish to kind of coat it in both the oil and the soy sauce. On a baking sheet lined with parchment paper, we are going to add all of our veggies. So I'm actually going to put the entire bag of broccoli florets. The recipe wants about six cups of veggies. Now, in my opinion, the more veggies, the better. So don't be shy on your vegetables. If you want to do more than six cups, do more than six cups. Just do your best to make sure whatever veggies you're adding, if you are going to do more than about the six cup range, that they are not starchy vegetables. So, you know, good things like broccoli and zucchini and not really things like corn and peas. So we are going to do broccoli. And then you saw that I had chopped up here all of the carrots. So I just took those baby carrots and cut them into smaller chunks just so that they would cook about the same time as the broccoli and the zucchini. So I sliced up my zucchini as well. So we're just going to layer this out on our baking sheet and then drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil. Preheat our oven to 425 and the chicken and the veggies are going in kind of side by side. While everything is cooking away, the chicken and veggies are in the oven, we're going to make the sauce. So what I have added to my bowl is one quarter cup of the peanut butter. This peanut butter does not have any salt. So if you want this a little more salty, you could always add some salt to it. I'm going to skip that and just make it as is, but I have one quarter cup of peanut butter and mine is chunky. You could do chunky or creamy, either one would work. We are going to put in one tablespoon of rice vinegar, actually one and a half tablespoons of rice vinegar. So there's one and a half. And then we are going to do one tablespoon of real maple syrup. That's going to give it a little bit of sweetness, which will be really, really yummy. And then we need one teaspoon of sesame oil. So a teaspoon here. And then half of a tablespoon of lime juice. You could do fresh lime if you'd rather, but you know, we're going to save some time here and just go with this lime juice and then also some ginger. So we want about a teaspoon of ground ginger and then you can add water to this to thin it out. So I'm going to stir and this smells super gingery. I am going to say that that is a decent amount of ginger. So if you are not a big ginger fan, you could definitely reduce that down to maybe half a teaspoon. Now I love ginger, so I'm completely okay with it, but I have not added any water yet. I'm just going to stir until I have a sauce consistency. So I think I will go ahead and pop in about a tablespoon of water to thin this out a bit. So let's do a tablespoon of water and that will help thin it out. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so this is the sauce. Now this recipe makes four Thai chicken bowls. So I am going to pull out my meal prep containers and we're just going to divide this sauce up into the four containers. 
You guys, this smells incredible. So for our sauce, I pulled out four of my reusable little containers. I'm going to just divide the sauce as even as I can. So probably about a tablespoon or so at a time into the containers until all of the sauce has been divided out. And by then our rice and veggies and chicken should be done. So I just pulled out the chicken. I know it looks burnt, but that's just the soy sauce and oil. The chicken itself is great. I'm gonna let this cool for just a couple of minutes and I'm just going to chop it. And then I have my veggies. These look amazing. I love when, oh, you guys are steamy. I love when the broccoli gets nice and crispy like that, yum. So this will also be divided into four and then my sauce is ready to go as well. So let me get the chicken chopped up and then we'll assemble the meal prep bowls. Let's start putting together these bowls. So here are my meal prep bowls. I love these because they have lids. I'll link all of my meal prep containers down below. The bowls, the two compartment and the three compartment. Here is my cooked rice. I also have all my roasted veggies and then I chopped up the chicken. Everything looks so good. So I am going to add one fourth of the rice into the bottom of my meal prep bowl. And then I'm going to top it with one fourth of the veggies. And again, I'm not really that concerned because these veggies are super low point. The only thing we have to even count points for is the tiny bit of oil that was used. And then I'm also going to top it with about a fourth of this chicken and again i'm just going to kind of eyeball it chicken is zero points and then we are actually going to pop in the peanut butter sauce that we ended up making this is what it looks like so i went ahead and just popped one of those containers in my bowl and this is going to be delicious we've got rice veggies and we're going to top it with that peanut kind of salty sweet sauce definitely definitely thai vibes so let's put together the other three bowls All right, my friends, here's our Thai chicken bowl. Doesn't this look incredible? I'm so excited for this. This is a very well-rounded, healthy lunch. You have your protein, your veggies, you have your rice, and then of course you get a yummy sauce to go right along with it. So for this bowl, rice, veggies, chicken, and sauce included, it is eight smart points on blue and purple and 10 smart points on the green plan. Now, if you're following purple, you could substitute a zero point rice and that would actually lower the points for you on the purple plan. And it is 374 calories for the entire bowl, which is amazing because Thai food can be pretty calorie dense. This bowl could be upwards of 800 calories at a Thai restaurant. So we've done some simple modifications and it's 374 calories and eight smart points for me because I'm on the blue plan. For a sweet treat this week, I am making Samoa cookie bars. Girl Scout inspired, but healthy and low point and low calorie. These are going to be absolutely incredible. The bowl. So let me show you what's in our recipe. First, you're going to need flour. You can use any flour. You could even substitute almond flour. This is just the organic whole wheat flour from Thrive. Definitely check out Thrive Market down below. You can save 30% from the grocery store on most products. They have thousands of clean, organic, whole food products for affordable prices. And when you join Thrive, you actually get a $24 value gift for free. So definitely check out my link down below for Thrive. You guys know I'm obsessed. You know my love for Thrive. I've been using it over a year now and I absolutely love them. I cannot find the products I like for less expensive and the variety locally. So definitely check them out. This is from Thrive as well. These are the Let's Do Organic unsweetened toasted coconut flakes. So you just need some type of unsweetened coconut. You'll need almond milk, salt, maple syrup, dates. These are just Medjool dates and these are from Nutstop. You guys know I also love to support Nutstop. They are a small business. They carry nuts, trail mix, granola, even chocolate and candy at really, really affordable prices. So I do have a link for these guys as well. It is not an affiliate link. It just gets you 10% off and free shipping. And you can't beat the prices and everything comes in these cute little packages, which I love packaging. So these are Medjool dates. Now let's talk about dates for a moment. There is definitely controversy on WW whether or not you count points for dates. 
I am not going to count the points for dates in this recipe, but according to WW, dates are zero points. So don't come for me. I'm just telling you what's in the WW app. You do whatever you wanna do. You're also going to need some butter of your choice. I'm gonna be using the Melt plant-based butter. If you opt for a light butter, like I can't believe it's not butter, you may wanna recalculate the points because it will definitely change because this butter is a little bit point heavy. And then Lily's chocolate chips, you could use any baking chip of your choice. So let's get started. I need some Samoa bars in my life. So to get started on our bars, first we're going to put in one half of a cup of our flour and a pinch of salt. And then we are just going to stir this together. Make sure that salt is mixed in really well with your flour. Once the flour and salt is combined, we're gonna finish putting together the crust. We have three tablespoons of melted and slightly cooled butter. And then we are going to do two tablespoons of maple syrup. So we're gonna go ahead and pop in two tablespoons. Give that a stir. You do want your crust a little on the crumbly side so that it forms a nice crust in the pan. So I'm gonna grab out an eight by eight baking dish, spray it with a little bit of nonstick cooking spray and we'll be ready to get the crust into the oven. So I went ahead and sprayed my baking dish with some nonstick cooking spray. This is actually a little bit smaller than an eight by eight, but it's not a big deal. They'll just be a little bit thicker. So I'm going to add the crust ingredients into the bottom of my baking dish and press it into place. So this crust looks really good. It's going to go in the oven for 12 to 15 minutes until it's kind of set. And in the meantime, we're going to prepare the other pieces of the bars. While the crust is in the oven, grab out a bowl and 12 dates. I went ahead and pitted them and sliced them in half. We're going to put them in the bowl and add some hot water. And we are going to allow the dates to soak for about five minutes. That will really, really soften them up. The dates are actually the sweetener in these bars. So we we want this soft. So once your dates have soaked, I drained them and added them here to a high powered blender. We are going to once again, add just a tiny bit of salt. The salt will kind of enhance the sweetness. And then we're also to our blender going to add vanilla extract. I don't think I showed you that in the beginning, so I apologize. You will also need vanilla extract. This one's from Thrive. Thrive has such a great price on vanilla extract. That's another thing I'd recommend you picking up from them. And then we need one third cup of almond or coconut milk or whatever milk you're using and one third cup of the maple syrup. Add all of that to your blender and then we're just going to blend this until smooth. Once everything is nice and combined, look at that. This is actually called date caramel. That's what it's called. Isn't that crazy? It smells literally like caramel sauce. So we're going to add that mixture. You can see it's nice and smooth here to a medium bowl. We are then going to add in the half of a cup of coconut flakes and stir that in. And this is the next layer of the bars. So once that crust comes out of the oven, it's just about done. We are going to spread this as the next layer. Doesn't that look delish? So the crust is done. Let's go ahead and add the date mixture to the top. And then we're just going to spread that out nice and even. And then this is going to go into the refrigerator for at least an hour. We're going to have this date caramel set on top of the crust. And then the last step is, of course, is chocolate. We have to have chocolate on the Samoa. So we're going to spread this out nice and even. I'm gonna pop this in the refrigerator for about an hour. So I just pulled the bars out of the refrigerator. Everything is nice and set. These look so good. So I melted two servings, 120 or 28 grams of Lily's chocolate chips, added a little bit of almond milk just to thin it out. And then what we're going to do is kind of spread. You can drizzle, you can spread. I'm just lightly going to spread the chocolate over the top. If you wanted to thin it out even more, you could certainly put it in a little Ziploc bag, cut the tip and then drizzle it over the top, kind of whatever your preference is but I'm gonna go ahead and spread so that we get a nice little bit of chocolate with each bar. Oh, this looks so good. And then this is going back in the refrigerator for about a half of an hour. We just wanna give the chocolate another little bit to set completely. And then we'll cut into these bars and I'll be back to show you what the bars look like. Oh, these look amazing and give you points and calories. So the bars are set, the chocolate is set. These look incredible. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these into 16 bars. So here is the size of the bars. They are 
are really, really thick, if you can tell. But this is cut into 16 servings. So that's a pretty good size bar. And here is what they look like. Doesn't this look incredible? You have the crust, the cookie crust. You've got the date caramel, and then it's topped with chocolate. I can't wait to try these. So let's do a taste test and see if they live up to the hype. Okay, let's try these. Ooh, they smell good. I hope that this is Samoa, Samoa cookie. Cheers. Delicious, delicious. So good, it's definitely Samoa. It has the cookie base, it has that caramel that the Samoa cookies have. You know what I'm talking about with that punch of coconut and the chocolate on top, literally decadent. So yeah, Samoa cookie bars craziness so let's talk points and calories so for one bar and this is not counting dates as points it is six smart points for one bar on all plans and that's cutting these into 16 servings it's only 209 calories which is less than one samoa cookie i'm pretty sure so great option it's sweet it's chocolatey it's cookie -y. delicious you guys have to make these. Thank you so much for joining me on another weekly WW meal prep. I hope you are as excited as I am about these recipes. You will find the link to my website where my recipes are down in the description box below. So head on over, check them out, make sure that you have them at your fingertips so that you can recreate them for your family. Again, if you haven't subscribed to this channel or my new channel, please take a moment and subscribe. I'd love to have you be part of my YouTube friends and family. Also in the description box are links and discount codes to all of my favorite things. The link to over and join me on Facebook and of course my nutrition coaching website. So I highly encourage you to spend a little time down in the description box. There's just a ton of valuable information. If you enjoyed today's meal prep, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out and I really, really appreciate it. And thank you guys again so much for watching. Happy Monday and I'll see you in the next video.